The difficult relationship between famous rapper Jay-Z and the R&B king R. Kelly stems from back in the 90s when they were fresh kids on the block trying to make it in life. While the hip-hop world was at that time technically ruled by Tupac and Biggie as the two major players, R. Kelly was right at the top of the R&B hierarchy. Jay-Z was technically the underdog in his department and even with the death of Pac and Biggie, he has never felt like he is the king of hip-hop causing R. Kelly to tower right over his head as the only original king in the industry. In a recent conversation with R. Kelly's ex-cellmate, Ronnie Bowe was allegedly shot at by unknown assailants who wanted him dead only a few days ago, he reveals to Hip Hop News Uncensored that while he and R. Kelly spoke to each other in prison, Kelly revealed Jay-Z could not get over his insecurities even during their practice for the joint album. According to Kelly he says, Jay-Z kept reminding him that he ain't bigger than him in the industry numerous times to a point that almost failed their joint project before it even started. Jay-Z just couldn't stomach the fact that R. Kelly was the bigger artist in the game and carried these insecurities forward and into the actual Best of Both Worlds tour that saw the two fighting with each other like co-wives. According to Ronnie Bow, R. Kelly begun to receive death threats way before the two even got on stage together and he was suspecting the famous rapper was behind this. This rift between the two artists escalated when R. Kelly ran off stage right in the middle of the show after he had seen some strange people in the Madison Square Garden's audience waving guns at him like they were warning him about what was coming next. As R. Kelly returned to stage following a search conducted to ascertain there was no danger, Jay-Z's bodyguards assaulted him with pepper spray sending him to hospital on an emergency stretcher to receive treatment. Very disappointed with Jay-Z's behavior, R. Kelly decided to sue the famous rapper for $75 million, and this definitely dug deep into Z's pockets as he opted to settle out of court. At this point, Jay-Z has three good reasons to hate on R. Kelly. The first being their unfounded misunderstandings during practice, R. Kelly choosing to walk off stage prematurely and leaving him on stage with his mic looking stupid, and finally the lawsuit that saw him dig deep into his coffers to settle him out of court. According to Ronnie Bow for Jay-Z, this was a triple blow and R. Kelly was to pay a hefty price for this in due time. Before long Jay-Z hired his ex-girlfriend Dream Hampton who he had been funding from time to time like he did when she mobilized black people to demonstrate at the Black Lives Matter campaign in Ferguson and Baltimore. A number of protesters who were arrested had her requisition for a few tens of thousands of dollars from Jay-Z to cater for their bail payments which he sent to her promptly, indicating that the two former lovers did have a funding arrangement for Dream's projects. According to Ronnie Bow. When Jay-Z had his own project to implement against R. Kelly, Dream Hampton was the perfect ally to help him prepare the most disturbing documentary of the season that would not only defame the R&B king, but also prepare him for a stage-managed prejudicial trial that would follow. Could this be proof that Jay-Z is the person behind R. Kelly's current ordeals? What we know for sure is that his history of financing Dream Hampton's activism makes him the best candidate among potential financiers of the surviving R. Kelly documentary. The two loved birds may have stopped seeing each other when Beyonce came into the picture, but they certainly haven't closed off the Bonnie and Clyde arrangement of being partners in crime to go around messing up people's lives and careers like they have done R. Kelly's. Irrespective of whether it's Ronnie Bo saying this or anyone else, it's definitely fishy to see Jay-Z's former lover right at the center of the making of the documentary that is responsible for R. Kelly's legal problems. A documentary that hosted the likes of Van Allen among other adult women to tell all kinds of lies on the R&B King. As they say there is never smoke without a fire burning somewhere. It would be a miraculous coincidence that Jay-Z who happens to be Dream's ex-husband and that still funds her activism, and that also has beef with the R&B King would not be in the know when she is taking on R. Kelly this time round. It's just not possible. He had to be involved Jay-Z. And he just said how, how much conflict they was experiencing uh, with each other, like even during the process of putting the album together, but especially on tour, you know, like they kept having petty disagreements. Like seriously? He felt like... Uh, you know, Jay-Z, you know, kept saying things along the lines that uh like man, you you not you not bigger than me, like you you act like you bigger than me. And he he felt like Jay-Z was kind of insecure because R. Kelly at the time was technically bigger than him. Uh, In Ronnie Bo's statements, 
he continues to say that while Sony 2 is at the heart of R. Kelly's troubles, it was a joint effort with Jay-Z who also had so much to gain in form of revenge for the financial loss Kelly caused him, and satisfaction to finally be at the top of the industry with R. Kelly out of the picture. According to Miranda Evans, I have always found it weird that Dream Hampton who happens to be Jay-Z's side dish also happens to be the executive producer of the surviving R. Kelly documentary. If the famous rapper wanted to hide his tracks he blundered. It's written all over the wall that even a blind can see he had a role to play. Or call it a hand in this. I am sure it was never intended that the world gets to know about this malicious arrangement. Dream Hampton must have forgotten she had made posts on social media boasting about Jay-Z's involvement in her activist programs. It probably skipped her mind and she thought there was nothing in the public realm connecting her to Jay-Z but again, there are just enough images online of the two intimately holding to prove this connection. The worst part of their mission is that it was all a mudslinging campaign and nothing in the documentary could be proved in court with evidence. Dominated with claims of physical abuse without bodily evidence to prove it, claims accusers were underage yet they had been 18 years and over, and allegations are Kelly was holding women against their will. None of these allegations could be proved in court, and indeed none of these appeared on the indictment. The documentary was only used to create an excuse for government's move to indict the R&B king. According to Darian Jones. Meanwhile as Jay-Z makes life difficult for R. Kelly, he happens to be the father of pedophilia as he was with Aaliyah himself, and was also seen with Foxy Brown at the age of 16. We also heard this from Wendy Williams whose voice contributed to R. Kelly's current problems but for some reason we do not know. Jay-Z is still in business and the government is not about to indict him for anything. This is because the government cannot be indicting one of the chief financiers of R. Kelly's takedown. It will have to take another billionaire hating on Jay to cause him his own problems. While we are not sure whether to believe everything R. Kelly's ex-cellmate Ronnie Bo says, many of the things he talks about like this analysis about Jay-Z's involvement in particular make a lot of sense. Thank you for watching today's video, a production of LFN Media, giving you another perspective of issues at hand. We make it our business to keep you updated with the truth amidst the cloud of lies the media wants you to believe. It is therefore important to subscribe to this channel, hit the bell icon and allow all notifications so that you don't miss out whenever we publish a new video.